would say is that countries differ. So the needs that certain countries have will differ from those others. Right? The interventions right, that have been carried out also differ. So when we say that we should be giving money to those that have already proven to be successful, on some level, okay, we could agree that perhaps, you know, with rising tides and all that kind of stuff. But maybe we need to spend a little more time trying to understand why things did not work there. So if one were to look at, say, Rwanda, for instance, right, and you have Rwanda being a case where 20%, right, right roughly ODA to GDP is 20%. So that means they are heavily dependent on aid. But we can't really discount, right, what took place. 14 years ago, right, with the situation that they're in now. So as far as them doing well with it, given the circumstances, I would say they're doing pretty darn well. You have other places like the Congo, for instance, where that figure jumps from, you know, ODA to GDP is somewhere around 95 percent. And there are massive problems there, problems that have persisted since the 60s, right, since the overthrow of Lumumba, the assassination of Lumumba, and you know, Mobutu being put in place and everything that's happened since then. So they are very ineffective, and there's reasons for that also. But these vary from nation to nation, and the needs of each nation also vary. So I don't think it's enough just to say that, hey, you know what, they're doing quite well, so we should help them, and they're not doing so well, so we won't help them. Instead, it needs to be a country-by-country -country assessment, analysis of what the needs are. And based on that, we can determine how we're going to go about the system. I, I noted that study, that the Inside and Dollar study, and, and what it came out of the World Bank and what they wanted to do is to show that countries that sign up to their recipe of kind of trade liberalization and privatization of, of, uh, of services and the, the kind of economic austerity measures, etc., are the ones that aid should be given to. Uh, and they defined the criteria as those are the countries that are going to use aid well. Uh, and so um, uh, there was a few pieces of research that were kind of missing in, the, in that equation. Um, and I think very often these, these studies are used in order to, to kind of prove a, a particular point. I think what you can say uh, about, uh, about aid is that uh, um, very often the countries that are most needy are those that are least strategically important to the major powers. Um, and, you know, you kind of got the story last week, or this week, of, of, uh, of Georgia. And, you know, is anyone going to go to Georgia's assistance? Well, not really. They're not very strategically important, are they? You know, it's kind of, uh, where do you intervene and uh, where does aid go? Typically, aid goes to, to the strategically important areas. And I think it's actually to the credit of, of the New Zealand government that, that you know, they have thought very carefully about where New Zealand aid goes to, and it goes to our neighbourhood of the Pacific, uh, and by the way, it mainly goes to the Melanesian countries, where the social indicators in countries like uh, PNG and Solomons and Vanuatu are not far off those in sub-Saharan Africa. We think we think we live in a prosperous kind of neighbourhood. We don't. You know, there's uh, there's some serious serious problems in Melanesia and, and Timor-Leste, which is one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere. So, so you know, I think, I think there are often countries uh, have a very good reason to give aid uh, to where it should go. I'd, I'd say probably if it was up to a UN decision, uh, then I'd, I'd be very doubtful that a, a better set of criteria would, would come out of that. And uh, I think actually, you know, so the example of New Zealand looking after uh, primarily it's neighborhood first, it's, it's not a bad place to start.